to the Tool Station Northern Counties East League podcast. I'm Richard Watts. I'm joined by League General Manager Matt Jones, who's going to give us an update from the league. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Going to start today looking at the Northern Counties East League Premier Division playoff final, which took place last Saturday, and say congratulations to Garforth Town, who've won promotion to the Northern Premier League beating Albion Sports 5-3 on penalties after a 0-0 draw. And I think I jinxed it just before the game. Well, on last week's podcast, I said it was going to be a cracker. And it was one of the most disappointing 0-0 draws you'll ever see in your life. I think there was so much at stake and the teams were so well matched. They just cancelled each other out. And I actually said to our finance director, who was sat with me at the match, after about 10 minutes, this is going to penalties. And usually when I say that, the, the floodgates open and there's goals galore. But even I couldn't jinx it this time with that. So, um, Garforth, very, very good, solid performance. Same from Albion, really well matched. Big, strong, physical sides. But Garforth came out on top. And that's semi-final and final. They've won on penalties. So, they've obviously been, been practising them. Hopefully, England are doing the same with the Euros coming up. I'd like to say congratulations. We mentioned him last week. Paul Marshall, Garforth Town Manager. It's the third promotion he's won from the Northern County of the East League Premier Division now, having previously done it with Tadcaster, Albion and Pickering. Really good achievement for him. I'm really pleased for everybody at Garforth because they've, they've done nice and steady, built steadily over a period of time, and we'll watch their progress in the, in the Northern Premier League next year with interest. Fantastic crowd at the game, 1,391. The place was absolutely heaving at the seams. And I'd like to say thank you. It's great effort by all the volunteers, the stewards and the security staff at Garforth to make sure the day went really smoothly. Uh, talking about Albion Sports, they'll be disappointed at the moment, having lost on penalties. But what a season they've had as well. They've exceeded everybody's expectations at the start, built a big, strong side, and they've got so much to look forward to. So get over the disappointment. Look forward to next season where they've got, they'll build on, on the success on the field, but they've also got a brand new stadium in the pipeline, which, which is a really exciting project for them. Uh, Division 1 playoffs. Well, they, we said there'd be close games. One was, one wasn't. And the, the actual the two winners came from the final league position, finishing second and third. The two highest placed teams went through to this Saturday's final. Uh, Beverly Town beat Retford United 2-1. Another fantastic crowd, 540. And third place, Shire Brook beat Wakefield AFC 4-0. I don't think anybody saw such a comprehensive win coming. But again, fantastic crowd, 507. To have over 1,000 spectators in total at the two semi-finals is absolutely superb. So thank you to everybody that came along. Final, the two teams that finished second and third, Beverly and Shire Brook, amassed 203 points between them in the league this year. So nobody can argue they don't deserve to be where they are. It should be, I'm going to hopefully not jinx it like I did last week's Premier Division 1, but it should be a cracking game on Saturday at Beverly. I'm going to end now. There's, there's very few games left of the season. Thank everybody, all 43 clubs, all the volunteers, the ground staff, everybody that helps out and everybody that's got this specially extended season finished because at, at times with the weather and the rain, it, it looked like we weren't going to get done. And everybody's really pulled together and done a fantastic job over the season. So thank you to everybody. Next up, NCEL Talk. I'll hand straight over to host Aaron Walton. Right. Good evening, everybody. We've got uh, myself, Aaron. We've got uh, Sai and Bob with me tonight, as usual. And we're going to have a look at what happened over the weekend and last night in the uh, League Cup, plus the uh, game on Saturday between Beverly Town and Shirebrook Town. So if we have a look, unfortunately, I'm going to go straight on to Saturday. Um, myself and Richard, we commentated on the Beverly Town versus uh, Retford United game, which was a good game, really. A lot of Beverly fans saying it wasn't a great, great game, but I thought, as a neutral, I thought it was a good game. It was exciting. Um, at Winterton, 500 plus there. What do you think to that as a crowd? That's a great crowd, isn't it? Really, really. You know, mm. for, to be on a neutral ground, 
that's a, a fantastic um, following by both teams. I've never both seen that. Good crowds this season, though, haven't they? Beverly and Retford United have both um, had good crowds across the season and, and certainly take yeah. plenty of fans to away games. So, a good, a good um, average, isn't it? No, no real surprise. You know, I wouldn't say it was a shock that they got that many because I think they're, they're both very well supported teams. They've got some good following there. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, I bought both sets. Both sets of fans did the team proud. The young lads with the drum at uh, for Retford, they kept banging that drum all the way through the game. And to be credit to the young lad who was on the drum, he could keep a beat. Well done, sir. <laughs> uh, and uh, the usual, the usual Beverly crowd were giving it some. Uh, so, but it was it was a good game, two one. Um, I thought Beverly sometimes had a little bit of hard work of it. There's some good performances from both team. Good individual performances. I thought the winning goal from um, Ben Hinchliffe, what a strike, because it bobbled before he hit it. And I thought, as soon as it bobbled, I thought, over the bar. <laughs> wow, wrong I was. Top corner. Brilliant finish. Really good. Really good. And uh, when both teams played football, you know, the smart short passes, passing and moving, they looked good. When they resorted to the big, the big hoof forward, maybe not as good. But... Uh, when you're playing a playoff game, it's panic stations, isn't it? So, well done to Beverly and well done to Dave Ricardo and his men uh, for getting through to the finals. And that'll be that'll be at Beverly on Saturday. I see they've already got uh, got the information out. There's no car parking at the ground, so they'll have to look either. What? Yeah, there's not much there anywhere. Um, I think you've been, haven't you, uh, Si, before to uh, yeah, Beverly? Yeah, yeah. yeah. been both times we've played place. there. And, yeah. and, and we've, we've always managed to get parked in there, but I'm I'm one of those early guys. Um, yeah. I, I like to get there early, so some of, the, some of our fans say that I get there early enough to, to help open up, the, <laughs> open up the gates and stuff, <laughs> but... I like to get there early and settle into into a mat, you know, into the into the yeah. whole mat experience. So I've never had a problem yeah. with parking there. But um, yeah, there's not a lot of space there. There is, is there? So what <laughs> what time? time so. What time do you get to a home game then? Let's say a three <laughs> o'clock kickoff. What time do you get to a home game? Um, probably before two. Four two o'clock. Yeah, oh, I must I'm, be really. I'm, hey, I'm, I must I like be to sad. get there early, get my parking space. Yeah go through and then as more people come in there's plenty of people to say hi to and, and catch yeah. up with a couple of people and what have you and I just like the whole yeah. I think it's because I'm, 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 I'm quite eager for the match experience so I have always like yeah. get there early yeah. and enjoy the full day rather Brilliant. than turning up and just like watching from kickoff yeah. kind of thing yeah. half past uh-huh. 12 for me yeah home games yeah same, same here half past 12 because yeah. we've got to, got to set up special quick if we've got a uh, sponsor in our box hospitality yeah. helps us set up yeah. as well you know so yeah, and then you've well, got to go. Find... It, it makes it a full day though as well. It makes you know. Then yeah, it does, doesn't it? And while it's quiet before the crowds come, you can get you can get sorted what you what we need to do. Volunteer, you know. Yeah, you do. And then it's got to take you an hour to find that bucket for your raffle, hasn't it, Bob? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you've got to be to win it. <laughs> you certainly have. You certainly have. So yeah. So that's just a little thing. I mean, there is there is a lot to do on match days. I mean, both you guys do a lot on match days, so you know what it's like. There is a lot to do, and it, it soon whips round to about 10 to 3, doesn't it? Oh, well, it certainly does. It certainly does, you're right. And then the teams are out, and then, then obviously you've got your bits and bobs to do after the game. I try and have a quick tidy up after the game, and then then I'm uh, then I'm away for me tea. So, yeah. uh, I, I sometimes look forward to the away games more than the home games, because we don't... We can, we can, I can see more of the more of the match on my way when I'm at home. I miss, yes. I miss probably about half an hour of it, you know. Yeah, I, yeah, I can, yeah, I can sympathise with you there, Bob. But now I'm on the microphone for the games. Uh, I, I don't, I don't have that problem because I've got to watch all the game. So even though I do, as, as you well know, Bob, even though I do get all the subs muddled up, <laughs> wrong names and what have you, it's still fun. So yeah, let's is. get anyway. Let's get, let's get back to, let's get back yeah. to Saturday. So. Unfortunately, we'll we'll gloss over it really quickly. Si, what was the other game like? Wakefield and Shirebrook. Oh, can't we just can't we just keep talking about Beverly for a bit first? <laughs> Sorry, mate. So we, we've all had it. Yeah, it's it it, it won't add it. That, and and that's sort of the, the bottom line for it. Really, Shirebrook yeah. were were really good. Better team on the day one. No complaints. Um. I think I'd said, I don't know if I'd said on this podcast, but I certainly said before the game that I think when it comes to playoffs, 
be it the semi-finals or the finals, they're all good teams. And at the end of the day, it can be as much down to mentality as it can be ability. Yeah. And, and I think Shirebrook just really were, were more fired up for it. And we were, we were out, out thought and out fought. Wow. Um, wow. And, it, and it just, it's, it didn't, it started obviously with an early goal for them and, Got yeah. worse in the afternoon <laughs> went on. Well, you, get, you get games like that, don't you? Nothing goes for you. The ball, the bounce of the ball don't go for you. Everything, and then I think when players are trying, trying harder, that that's when you, 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 your body sort of stiffens up. The pass goes too short or too far. Your turns out as good, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and people think, ah, oh, we're rubbish, we're rubbish, but. I think more often than not, his players trying too hard. They're not relaxed. So yeah, that can and they're not, as well. they're not then playing like their natural game. And exactly, yeah. And like you say, mistakes happen. And um, yeah, no, no, no complaints on Shire, but winning fair play to yeah. them, um, putting a good performance. And I think it'll be a cracking match um, against Beverly in the final. I'm not really sure who will who takes that one. To be fair, um, yeah. Both sides, yeah. both sides have impressed this season. Mm. Um. And both have very similar styles, I think. Mm. So it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top with that one. It definitely will be. And I should say it'll be very, very packed there because, as we've said before, Beverly's one of them grounds where you can't get all the way around. You can only get around three quarters of it, can't you? So uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how many people go. Uh, it, was so a, that's... it was a good crowd. It got 507, wasn't it? For the match, it, when they played at Parkgate, Trevor and Wakefield. So I yeah. imagine there'd have been, I'd, I'd imagine there'd have been a good following from Wakefield for, on the day. Yeah, um, I was going to say I think we had. I mean, it's I don't know what the split was, but I would definitely say we had the majority. Um, yeah, but which did it was difficult because you, sometimes you can judge it on noise when you score a goal. How much they, you know, how much noise you get from one set of fans compared yeah. to others. But we didn't score, so I can't, I can't even <laughs> sort of tell you what sort of uh, crowd we had on that. But we had a lot of fans all down in, you know, at Parkgate. You've got that sort of like elevated side where the dugouts yes. are. Yeah, round, and we had pretty much the whole of that Excellent. that side down down there. A lot of the Shirebrook fans were down in sort of that corner where the entrance is. Uh, and yeah. that end. So yeah, we we had a good following, which was great to see. You know, it turned out to be our last game of the season, but yeah. everyone's a little bit stinging from it. But we yeah. Yeah. we'll rest, we'll lick our wounds, and we'll we'll yeah. go again next season we'll and, again and next try and do season. better. Well, let's. Well, we 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 want you in. We want you in the uh, prem. So let's hope we get it next season. Fingers so, crossed. But it's, been, it's been a good season for Wakefield overall, hasn't it? To say. It's 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 been good and bad. It's been mostly oh, good, but the, yeah. the 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 matches that put us in in that position, and I think yeah. this is this is where we fell down compared to the teams like Shybrook and Beverly yeah. Parkgate, is we were losing points against the te- teams further down the table. I don't know if we yeah. had that relaxed attitude that because they were further down, it was going to be an easy game. But those teams that are further down, especially when they come to our place. Battle for everything, and you've got yeah, to. They raise yeah. their game, and you've got to raise it back. And I think exactly, we, we, a, yeah. lot of, a lot of people have said on our social media, the you know, the manager, the captain, and everything have said oh. it's us being in this position by dropping those points. Really, yeah. where you know, we we if we if we'd have got those wins, you never know. We might have had a better shot at the title. So yeah. that's the bit they've got to knock out for next season. Yes, um, yeah. and, and really get that mentality to to put teams to the sword that are further down, but. Yeah, football is a cruel mistress sometimes, isn't it? Where it certainly it, is. Without the lows, the highs wouldn't taste quite so sweet. Absolutely, and everybody needs to think of that because you know, your teams cannot always win every week, week in, week out. Some people are fickle. And like you say, you've got to remember that the bad times make the good times even sweeter. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, anyway, so we'll, gloss it. We'll, we'll finish with that sign now so you can... Uh, <laughs> Get a smile back on your face. So let's, just, let's next yeah, season. <laughs> next season now. Let's go on to um, the uh, league cup. Last just before night. we go, just, oh, just Bob, go on. Then. I've just got one thing to say. Yeah. There were two matches in the Division One on uh, Saturday. Oh, there was yes. And one of the games, you know, as you know, Aaron, I like my stats. You certainly um, do. Yeah. 
One of the games, Harrogate and Ralph. Harrogate won one nil. But yep. that's the longest trip of the season. Harrogate Ralph, 111 yep. miles. Wow. Just one way. Just, <laughs> just one way, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not allowed but, to come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I was looking on the, I was thinking today, that must be the longest trip of the of the season for any team. To yeah. Harrogate. And I looked yeah. on the mileage grid on that tool station site. And it is. It's 111 miles. Because yeah, so, so it's a good job. It's a good job, Ralph, for not playing Harrogate on an evening, because that would be a, a oh. late, a late night. Yeah, back, yeah. It? yeah. So we've definitely, got, we've got it. Oh, we've, we've also got skipped. Twelve. Sorry, you've skipped another one as well. Which which um, we we missed out. The playoff final for yeah. promotion from the Prem. Oh, I've yes. got that down, but that was further down. All oh, right, because you is that is that sorry. coming off after the League Cup final? Sorry, because you mentioned League yeah, Cup. Yeah, sorry, oh, yeah, gonna... yeah, yeah. I was just gonna, I was gonna wax lyrically about the uh, League Cup final, then I was gonna go on to um, finish with uh, the glorious Garfer. Stole your thunder. Sorry there. Yeah, no, don't worry, <laughs> don't worry. This is all made up on the back of a, a fag packet. <laughs> <laughs> So, so if we if we go if we have a look at the league cups, I know you were there, Bob. I saw you. You were spotted early on by my son. I was. He tapped me on the shoulder. That was yeah. Yeah. yeah he says, "Oh, it's his Bob from Ghouls here. Is he here?" Yeah. And, this, and, is you know, was well, this was quite yeah. funny. Actually, there was one young lad about fourteen from Emily, and yeah. I, I went and said, "We go, we go." The AFC shirt, you see. Yes. And he says to me, "Why have you come today? Because you're from Ghoul. So I said, oh, I've come to watch a good match. All oh, right. So Emily's going to win. Well, I said, we'll wait and see. You know, no, yeah. You know. yeah. So there you go. They didn't win. Um, no, so, no. Uh, look, looked a good crowd because it looked packed in that little that little bit where you was. Uh, Bob, we were doing the commentary. Which, yeah, you were uh, sectioned. I couldn't get to you because they wouldn't let me through. It was, you were no, sectioned I, off. Oh, bloody so, neck. Oh, heck. so oh, must, you've been, must you've been be. sectioned. <laughs> yeah, I've more than once, more than once. Believe you and me, I think I've been sectioned about five times this week already. So anyway, it, it, was, it was a good crowd. I mean, did you see what the crowd was? I didn't know. Six hundred and sixty-seven. Well, that's good. That's good for a midweek game, and they've had to travel, so that's good. Uh, mm. And they, and they were and they were very noisy. But were, I've got to I've got to say, um, Bob. That that Parkgate team, what a team! Yeah, I thought they were very fit. Never stopped running, did they? <laughs> and well organised. The defence was well organised. Ross Duggan up front. He was, he was, you know, it was a thorn in their Emily defence all night. I thought. Yeah. And Silas, and Silas kept, he kept from one wing to the other, didn't he? And uh, Silas yeah. Volodilid Collins. Yeah. yeah. Great, great game. Really good game. I thought. Uh, I thought the lads in midfield, Robert Ludlam and Connor Williamson, were yeah, superb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I thought Brandon Whitfield's goal, if anybody gets the chance to see it, it looked like he picked somebody's pocket in his own half, kept running and running and running. He hit the shot, and I, I, I think um, the Emily Cape will be a little bit disappointed with himself with that mm -hmm. one because it seemed to he seemed to stop it, and then it just rolled in, didn't it? Pickled in, didn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, but that was that was one nil at half time. Now. Bob, second half. Emily have obviously had a rollicking off Mr. Tracy. Mm -hmm. uh, and they come out and it's a corner or a cross. Now, I think Jordan Greaves save straight after half time for uh, Parkgate. I think that was sometimes that I think it was a difference because if Emily had scored then, yes. you know, a bit of panic yeah. might have set in. But yeah. his save, brilliant save, point blank, was, tipped, was, tipped yeah. it over the bar. Mm. Then obviously mm. the, there's some good sub substitutions made, won't they? And uh, mm. Mr. Guest, I can't I can't pronounce your your first name. Is it Kian or Cian? Cian? No, I, I don't know. know. I don't want to say your name wrong, so I'm going to call you Mr. Guest. Yeah. Scored well, a couple it, of goals. Well, well, it was the guest of honour last night, wasn't he? Really, he certainly was. He certainly was. Uh, and as you said, Ross Duggan, super movement. He got caught offside a couple of times, Bob, and I thought it was incredibly tight. I don't think he was offside on one of them because he'd, he'd bent his run. But the lino, I think, well, 
He did his best. I, I thought, uh, hats off to the referee in the Linos last night. I thought they were pretty good. Yeah, Didn't I you? thought so. Yeah. Yes, I thought I the ref tried to keep the game flowing and then he mm. then he stopped it when he thought it was getting a bit silly. So, well done, referee. Uh, mm. Jack Aslam, non-stop, all night. Brilliant. Uh, who else do I think? Ahamid Taha, again, super. Mm. Kept running, lots of energy. Uh, and the uh, young fullbacks, Hart and Smith, I thought they were just started a little bit steady. They were just getting beaten on the wings a little bit, but then they set, settled down and then they played really well. So everybody in that team, what a great performance. I think the manager uh, has done a fantastic job with um, Parkgate. And uh, as I said before, I think if they keep that team together, as you intimated, Bob, earlier on, if they keep that team together, the Premier League has got to a, a certain a big a team to worry about. They're a fast directing way, definitely. definitely. Definitely, definitely. So so that was the cup final and it was really good. It was good to see uh, the Division 1 champions beat the Premier champions. Yeah. I think I think Emily, I think nothing quite went right for them. Um, they tend, they, uh, every uh, pass was short or it was too much or they were miscontrolling it, they were overstretching. So it's one of them games a little bit like everything seems to not quite go for you, doesn't it? It would, be, it would be good. I was thinking afterwards, if if we had if every year they had a champion of champions final and played at a neutral ground, I think, I think it caused a lot of interest, really. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely a real good idea, that Bob. It, yeah. yeah, or a season open like like a charity shield, but you know, but you know, like it was as a pre season, oh, even better, oh, even better. better. Yeah. I think it, I think it'd be good, and uh, yeah, I think it'd be good. Uh, yeah, a pre-season champion of champions. That'd be yeah, yeah, definitely. Are you are you listening? The NCEO? Are you listening? What a yeah, great Mr. idea, Mr. Matt, Matt Jones. Jones. Ah, he's at Sheffield Wednesday tonight watching the uh, Peniston Church. So he, he's at his church because he's a big Sheffield Wednesday fan. Oh, he'd be so, enjoy that then. Uh, I would. So, looking at, looking right. at the Emily game, just just as obviously I wasn't yeah. at the game, so you, you guys know from what you saw. Yeah. Would would part of like last night's performance for Emily be the the fact that they've had obviously a gap between the last game and the, which was the League Cup semi final? You know, the, the, their last league game was a long time back, wasn't it? They, they finished their league campaign on the 9th of April, Looked and they've only had the League Cup since. So so that little gap, mm. whereas Parkgate have had momentum because they've been yeah. playing yeah. three or four times a you know yeah. every. Sort of eight days and stuff, and they've they've had that momentum and just kept going, haven't they? I think it yeah. was the difference between between a well oiled chain on a cycle and a rusty chain on a cycle, and I think you're spot on there because they did look a little bit not quite clicking. You know, your usual performers played well, your Jack Cowgills uh, and so and so on and so forth. They were they were really good captain. Uh, I can't remember his name. The captain, little guy. He, you know, they, they were they were they were playing well, but I think you hit the nail on the head there, side. They're just a little little bit not ring rusty, but you know they weren't as smooth as uh, Parkgate were. Mm. But I think credit to Parkgate's fitness. Mm. Oh, exactly. that many games and, and look so fit. Uh, so, and everybody, so well. everybody, was, everybody was tackling for the ball, running back, defending. You know, it was really really good, really good. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good game. Now, let's get on to the big game in the Premier Division. Garforth Town versus Albion Sports. Two of my favourite teams in the league. Uh, I couldn't really separate who I wanted to go up. I didn't want either of them to go up, really, for selfish reasons, because I like visiting both grounds. Nil-nil uh, at full time, and it was penalties again, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What was the crowd there, Robert? I know you like your. your, well, uh, your I've, got, I've, got, I've got this written down. One three nine one one thousand three hundred ninety one. Wow. Wow. And it was nine hundred. I think it was nine hundred seventy six the, the week before for the semi final. So there was even more there. You know. Well, so, well um, the, the chairman will be rubbing his hands. Hopefully, oh. <laughs> all all that be all that be sold as well. So. So great stuff. Um, well done to Garforth. They've had a very good season, and they're always there or thereabouts. Any, any uh, team. Who's the manager there? Uh, Paul Marshall, isn't it? Paul Marshall, yeah, you're a really good manager. Yeah, a any team managed by Paul are always there or thereabouts. Out there, he's a good, he's, he's a good manager. Lots of experience. They got some I, I, good I, I, players there. I think I've said it before. Was it 19 years ago? He took Goal up 
from the North East Counties to Northern Premier. So he'd done the yeah. same again with Gareth, you know. So yeah. he's got a good, yeah. a good pedigree. Good, Very a good, much good, so. Yeah. Yes, a good manager. And they've got some good players there. I mean, his son's a real good player, Charlie Marshall. I've seen him score some super goals against Barton. And one of my particular favourites is the Miners Messi Sam Barker, really good little footballer. Um, he used to play for Arrogate, uh, Arrogate Railway. Did Sam? I remember seeing him play many years ago for Arrogate Railway. And they've they've a host of other players. And he, and he, uh, one uh, a player we both know really well, Bob. But Sam Cable. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He, he, was, he was he was in the lineup on Saturday, wasn't he, Sam? He yeah. was. Yeah. It didn't quite work out for at Barton, and it, I, I did like. I, I, he's one of my favourites, he's Sam. I like Sam. I like to use a chat to Sam. And I'm so pleased that he's uh, he's finished his season off well because he was frustrated at Barton. So I'm so pleased yes. that his season's come around and he's and he's got some uh, he's got some silverware. So well done, Sam, and well done, Garford. Hard luck to Albion. It was a real good I know Riz was has uh, has had a good season with his team and they've got some real war horses in that in that Albion sports squad. Good players there. I mean, Robbie Fox, Ashley Flynn up front. They've got. I was just uh, noticing that, that he wasn't in the lineup, was he? I was well, looking Ashley. at the team. And, yeah, that's, that's surprising. So he might have been on holiday. Was, yeah, because he scored twice in the semi, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Or he may be injured. Or Could maybe be. Got another club. We never know. But uh, yeah, I, I felt sorry for Aaron Bassey because uh, good captain. Uh, very rarely does anything wrong. Nice guy as well. Uh, who else is it? One of my another one of my favourites in that team is uh, Owen Murphy. We used to play for Thackley. Good player. He'll come on and, and give you a, a game. And again, another good up and coming lad who was at Barnsley. And that's uh, Kareem Hassan Smith. Another good player. So Garforth, we've lost them. They've gone up to the next division. Mm. So well, well done to Garforth. Uh, do we know now, Bob? I know you always seem to know most what's happening. Do we know who's coming up, who's going down, who's moving sideways? Well, well it's funny you should say that, Aaron. It's funny you should say oh, right. that. I saw something on the Shirebrook tr- Twitter about four days ago. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> they've, they've, they've got a hundred points in Shirebrook, and this is on their Twitter. At step six. At step six. It points per game. If somebody finishes third, and if they've got the most points of, of all the of all this of all the leagues in step six, I think the six six leagues, the third the third place team could go up. I think there's oh. got to be clarification, clarification on that. But somebody has somebody has said that. So whether that's right or not, so it'll be interesting. yeah. There has been that speculation that they're going to go up, but they're going to go to the Midlands rather than uh, is it to... United? Um, United and Seal Prem. Yeah. United yeah. Um, I think because the, there was also on the NCL Facebook group, there was there was a post that someone did which had sort of the unofficial projections for next season's table. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for, yeah. For us. And obviously looking at Division 1 in that one, Shirebrook and Beverly both were, were not in there. Beverly were up and Shirebrook missing um, and Stavely. So I think the uh, you know the prediction there was that Stavely would go to to Midlands as well. All right. Did you see, and did, did you see also? I think on, it was on the uh, North East County site. Nostel, Nostel Miners. They are looking to fill the vacancies for a chairman, a first team manager, a volunteers, and a match day secretary. Yeah, that's all rebuilt there. Yeah, and and, the, and they said that, that it said that they are they are looking to fill these club vacancies and hoping they can. Keep up, oh, keep can continue playing, you know, continue. So, I hope they um, they do. So, you see, you get to an end of a season, you don't know how many teams, what's going to happen, if they're going to move sideways or, or whatever, who's going to come down. It's all speculation, really, isn't it? It is, and there's a be a merry go round of players coming and going and managers coming and going, and it's yeah, you know, and, all, and we saw the club thorn, club thorn, they won the is it the Humber Don? So they might get promoted to the North East Counties Division 1. I don't yeah. know if that's going to be... So, yeah, Club Thorn, Durnan District, Middleton and Appleby Frodingham were the ones that were predicted oh, to be coming up. But oh, obviously this, it was yeah. only an unofficial projection uh, yeah. looking at this table. So it's what someone with a, probably a, a, bit, a bit of knowledge and a bit of speculation combination yeah. of both has, has come up with. We'll have to wait and see because 
it's not in it. Yeah, that, that's that's down to what the league says, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, have they all passed the ground grading? I know Middleton, they'll yeah. put, they play at South Leeds Stadium, so that'll have passed because that's where Hunslet play, play rugby league. So that'll have passed, I would have thought. Uh, yeah, Club Zone, they've, 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 they've got a good ground. Yeah. Yeah, they've got a good ground. Um, App Frod or App will be frodding them. App Frod as we know it locally, don't we, yeah. Bob? <laughs> yeah, we, we played, App will be frodding we played years ago, so that's a name from the past. Of yeah. from the path of the them, I was so. wondering where that was. So that's over your neck of the woods, is it? It yeah. is. I think they play. They play in the middle of Scunny, Scunthorpe. Yeah, uh, Scunthorpe. That's right. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, a Brumby somewhere. So it's right in the it's right in the middle of Scunthorpe. Easy to get to for you, Si. Nice trip so, across the sixty-two. Yeah, yeah. That's that, not too bad. And then obviously, well, it's always interesting to see, like I said, who moves sideways and. Who goes up and who goes into, like you say, into other leagues? Because um, I don't know about you guys, but I do like seeing new teams. Yeah, yeah. I do. Oh, yeah, yeah. League, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. see how they go and what they're like. And, and, and I mean, in, in the Prem, you generally get the teams that come up. They've always seemed to be, over the last few years, always fighting for promotion at the end of the season as well. So they come straight up and up again. Mm. Uh, well, 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 we know Winterton's coming down. That's because we know they're coming down. Don't we? we know for that. Yes, yeah, and uh, they've uh, they've lost their management team. They've all resigned. Oh, I think or gone. Yeah. Oh, I didn't so know that. That was, that was the news that greeted me at the ground on Saturday. Do you know oh, they've God. all they've all I don't know resigned or left. So I would have thought if they're all if they've all left, got a club in mind that they're going to go to. So that'll be interesting. Mm. See where mm. they go to, mm. um. But uh, one but never know. Yeah, just going back, there's one match we haven't we haven't spoken about, and that was the West. That's on Bank Holiday Monday. Was the West Riding Cup final? Yes, when, at Ossie, when Nairs, Nairs reverses Pontefract at Ossie, yes. wasn't it? Yeah, uh, Pontefract won um, four nil. Yeah, unfortunately, but a good crowd good for Bank Holiday Moon, eight hundred and eighty-five. Wow, that's superb! Isn't it? That's so superb. West Riding Cup fan, yeah. So yeah. the, the Ponty, Ponty must have played well because because I think well, Nesborough, they I think they saved the best football to play Barton, but <laughs> they uh, <laughs> they they they've, they've, they've had a good season Nesborough. They've not really dropped off. I mean. A lot yeah. of the times they'll, they'll play well up to a certain point and then they'll drop off a bit, but they've not really dropped off this season at all. They, no. they've, they've had a real good season and they've got some good players there. They're, um, I'm trying to think of the striker. Is it Parks, the striker, the young lad? He's, he's he always scores against us, and of course they've got the the <clears throat> the evergreen uh, Greg Anderson. Mm. He must have he must have played so many years. Such a good player. Uh, and uh, yeah, they've they've had a, they've had a good season. So a little bit of a it was not a sour note, but uh, unlucky to lose that, I suppose. But it's again a good crowd. So they're really getting the crowds out there for these big games, uh, guys. I reckon it'll be a good crowd at Hillsborough tonight. And some workshop as well. Like, that'll be a, a good. Well, crowd. they're both they're both well supported, aren't they? I know Peniston yeah. are real well supported, and uh, obviously workshop are in a higher league, and they've they've always. Uh, they always have a good crowd at Sandy Lane, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Another one of my favourite grounds to go to. That one. Have you been, uh, guys, to uh, workshop Sandy Lane? I have. Yes, yes. It's a nice ground, isn't it? I think I it's. Mean, I've, done I've done Peniston, but not Worksop. Oh, you, what do you think to Peniston, uh, Si? It's a nice one. Is that one? Yeah. It's, it's it's one of those where if if you're not watching the football, you've got a nice scenic view as well from all the, oh, the, yeah, the hills absolutely. and stuff out there. Lovely I've got all my singing it grounds. I've got my Penistons, my Emleys, my Retford United. Silsden. Um, yeah. Silsden, that's another one. Yeah. And then, then if you're bored, go to Goal and you can look at the salt and pepper pot. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can. Any news on your ground then, uh, Bob? Any any well, news? What's happening? Well, well, well. well, well. Well, it's, it's going to be start. It's going to be start this year, but I don't think there's any an exact timetable as yet. I think we're still waiting to hear from the specific details. There was, so, there was talking. There was talking about November, but it could yeah. it could be, could come forward. Um, but yeah. we're not. Uh, I think we're still waiting to hear. Really, it's, there's more. There's more questions and answers 
Yes, uh, the mm. mm. so, Would you would you be having to go to a different ground and play then? No, we're looking to play. We're looking to play at our ground. Uh, oh, put right. some, um Put some. They're going to put some facilities in, but with the game, it's all to be decided. It's all up in the air, really. I think. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, uh, well, that'll be, I've seen the plans. It looks really good. Looks really yeah, good. In a year, eighteen months. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it will. It would, it would be good. You know. Yeah. But there's a lot to. There's a lot to be thrashed out. Um, um, oh god. Yeah. Well, when there's money to be, when there's money to be spent, there usually is. And god. and are Wakefield still playing at Bellevue for next season? Uh, si? Yeah, as far as I'm aware, I, I think the the contract when it was first done was three years. Um, initially, yeah. um, and that's our first one. So I think, yeah, I think we've certainly got the next couple uh, there. Yeah. Um, and in the meantime, I know that our owners are working hard on trying to secure some land to try and obviously build like things like training facilities and what have you, so that at least yeah. we can we can start having that and having our youth teams playing there and things like that, and and start having a proper home base from where from where we can build yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and develop. Yeah. Um, and then in future, obviously, the the the, the dream for, for us is is to have our own um, ground and what have you. But Ooh. difficulties are uh, in this day and age, land is expensive and often wanting to be used for either commercial or housing, isn't it? For for yeah. with councils and what have you. Um, yeah. A lot of the other clubs that have history and go back further have had their land. For, for decades, I suppose. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and and we're not, you know, we, we've never had that position. You know, we, we're new, yeah. so you know, we, yeah. we've hopped around the rental market, if you if you like, <laughs> with yeah. with temporary homes since yeah. our inception. Yeah. And, uh, yeah nice. but the, the, the dream one day is to have our own place and then really grow that into into a proper footballing hub for the city, but. Um, you, from you, the you, yeah. I mean, you think the council, if it's something such as that, where it's develop, it's bringing people in, it's bringing kids in to to develop the football skills, getting them off the street, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, building something up. You'd think that the council may give you, not give you some land, but you know, yeah. And I, I, know, I know, know, I do know that we are. You know, obviously, we're working with the council to try. Right. You know, with, to try that that is the you know the ultimate aim and yeah yeah i'm sure i'm sure they have yeah they possibly do reasons. yeah I'm not, I'm, might... not the, I'm not in the inner sanctum to know everything that's going on obviously but well, uh, yeah i know sure that our, feeling our future is in good hands yeah i know that feeling i'm not in the inner sanctum and speaking of how long people have had grounds i think barton town's had their marsh lane ground since about 18 1880 <laughs> so and some people some people will say not much has changed <laughs> I, 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 I don't, are they doing any work on the pitch this summer? Did you say they're doing some uh, work on the pitch? Um, they're just wait, I think they're just waiting for the ink to dry, as well as the right. pitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sore subject with the chairman every time somebody mentions the pitch, so nobody dare mention it. I yeah, I think, they, I I think got, yeah, I think they've got all the all the all the stuff in place to get it done either this season or. Uh, or this close or beginning of next season or something like that. But I think we've had such a such a bad winter. It, mm. But the thing is, it's going to be the norm, isn't it? Yeah, so, unfortunately. Yeah. So that's it. So so we're coming to the end, boys. We're coming to the end of our podcast. So uh all leaves us to say is uh, good luck to all the teams for next season. Good luck to the new teams coming in and good luck to the teams who are going out the league. Uh, with promotion, so good luck to Garforth and good luck to Emily on their venture into the Northern Prem, and mm. good luck to Parkgate in in the NCL Prem and either Beverly or Shirebrook who will be joining us. Or, or so, both, who knows? Or or both. Or both. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Don't be too controversial, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Not like me. <laughs> no, I know. So. Uh, so it's all it says. It all it says for me is, uh, uh, well, uh, good night or oh, God bless to everybody. Yes, I'm here. And have a good summer, everyone. We'll see you in yeah. there at the start of the new season. We'll, we'll see you next season, full of vim and vigor. <laughs> I find I find that more things to talk about. 
Back non league football. Oh, well, we, well, that's easily done. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for this edition. If you've got any news for the podcast or you'd like to appear on the podcast, please email ncelpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.